Let me just start my introduction. I'll, uh, I'll be working on Azure for almost five years uh, in the deployment and then working on IAS and the PaaS, the Windows Server System Migration and other part as well. So I'll just uh, go ahead and start the demo and then let's we talk about what is uh, Windows Azure infrastructure and what could be the services for this. Uh, let's talk about the agenda for today. The agenda would be today as the introduction of Microsoft Azure, the cloud terminology, what are the cloud terminology we has been used, and then we will have a demo and what could be the different types of the virtual machines and what could be the prerequisite and how we are going to have in trouble with the VMs and all. Uh, if we have time, we just, we'll just go ahead and I'll create the demo as well. We just work upon this, uh, the demo part much and then the theory part less. And so it could be easily understandable how we can just, uh, you know, understand the Azure model and how it will be working uh, throughout the process and what could be the settings or the VMs uh, needs to be created and what could be the prerequisite and how Azure model, the cloud model has been working. Uh, in, in the public area and it is uh, you say it is very demanding and nowadays everyone wants in the cloud and learn cloud what learn windows azure what is windows azure and all and the services which they introduce within an year are been very much helpful to others and saving their infrastructure cost as well so let's start the introduction to microsoft azure I just say what is my windows what is windows azure the windows azure is a open and a flexible cloud platform which means if you have a you have the flexibility suppose if your customer ask you to just i need a tensor within an hour could you able to perform this task in your on premises i won't think so it can be because it has to be uh, go through the process the poc and the purchasing team has to be handled and that it will go that that has to be go through the IT department and a couple of finance department and other and then after that you just contact to your vendor and will receive the part with it at least for two to three months and the cost would be approximately once hour to be four lakh that if, if it is going for the ten server it will be around forty lakhs. But here you just Within 10 minutes, choose your instance, what are the instance, which your instance running per hour or per month you will be paying. So it is that much flexible. Apart from that, if you are not using those VMs or the servers, just go ahead and delete and save your bill as well. And the second part is build, deploy and manage applications where you just build and deploy your applications, the day-to-day -day applications, the VMs or probably if you have in your organization having a developer, they need it for testing like they need a Visual Studio or the SQL Server to connect in, or they, they might need a mobile developer. You have the need need to work on those areas. Just within 10 minutes or the five minutes, just go ahead and create those things. Even though you just go ahead and create the network and connect from your network within a few hours or, or probably a couple of hours, which is just the settings, the whatever the settings to be required for you. We'll discuss on the um, a long session when we have a networking part and then we come to the build applications so you can use microsoft for your build applications or use json c plus plus java or other framework tool develop and build your application based on your environment and it is very easy and once i'll show you the demo i'll just just start a couple of things on this part and then come to the integration public cloud application which means uh, you can integrate any of the public applications to your on-prem environment and nowadays i am seeing that there is a couple of users and a couple of companies or the organization they need uh, to know okay how they can set up the hybrid environment are they going for the cloud and suppose a few of the customers are coming and saying, okay, they, they just need to deploy a web application over there, but they need to deploy the SQL Server the on premises. So, how you are going to integrate that is very easy and simple. And probably the uh, 
the users which is coming they having some 100 server or 200 server and they just wanted a hybrid setup and uh, need and dr the direct uh, really that direct recovery to the on premises that is also possible and apart from that you have an office which is integration with azure ad uh in tune and couple of other application which is integrated with the azure ad and then azure ad to the on premises and you will have the same network and the same user credentials will be used by your users so let's uh move to the next slide which is why use cloud why use cloud means is uh, as a normally no more terms of why use cloud means what could be the benefit you got if you use cloud or the windows azure or aws what could be the technology of cloud so the first of all you got a service delivery the service delivery is your in your hand how much fast you need to provide the service delivery to your customer some of your customer ask they need in some file data server and the file server and the ad environment or call it the 10 vms how much time would you take in on premises i would say it will be a couple of month to do so but here it will take just a few hours to complete so you are increasing the microsoft azure is increasing the service delivery by providing the azure platform for a uh, service delivery level and on demand resource suppose uh, as as i have already uh, told in my previous slide that on demand uh, resources this is suppose we have uh, 10 vm requirement or uh, or apart with the power bi or you can say any any other development tool which you need it on urgent basis just you have to do a few click in azure portal and it will be ready but in on prem yes it will be taking a month or either you have to go for the free trial version to download from the portal and, and then go upon it and the risk uh, it's reduce the risk uh, as i know the microsoft cloud is that much secure that even though you can track your users what they are doing on your portal the rvac permission which the users uh, with the azure has you can restrict to the users and uh, even though you can allow only for the couple of application which you wanted to allow they are having a security center where you just see the alert configure the alert oms you can do the patching and you can reduce the reduce the security is the passes and everything could be everything could be moving to the cloud and and it just reduces the risk and the like load balancer and the application firewall which is just working for your environment and protecting your environment in cloud and couple more other other services microsoft does have which just protect uh, your environment you can do the encryption end to end level vm disk storage and a couple more things and then it just come to the cost reduction it's a big matter when you just uh, it's, it's mostly matters when you just work in a organization or id company where the high or the or the low it doesn't matter what the cost is always matters so they having a pay as you go how much you wanted to pay and the services we are using that much only you have to pay if you are using the services per hour basis you have to pay per hour basis or if you are using the services per monthly basis you just pay for monthly basis that is not that that is not possible in the on premises now we just conclude these things into the one sort if we need to set up a new infrastructure in on premises at least it will take minimum Four to five months if you just go in the fast mode, but the same infrastructure if you wanted to create an Azure, it just take a week or probably three to four days to just go ahead and and complete and ready set up ready the set up with the new infrastructure here. And just let's move to the next slide. Now we'll talk about the cloud terminology. Cloud terminology will work on the three parts: is an IaaS, PaaS, and the SaaS. Infrastructure as a services, software as a services, and platform as a services. Basically, the infrastructure services is the on-demand server, like you are having Windows Azure, VM, VMware EC2, the VMware vCloud, and the platform as a services, like you have in the Google App Engine, Salesforce, 
Windows Azure, Power BI, Office 365 is a good example of a platform as a services and the software as a service. Sorry, uh, the Office 365 comes in the software as a services, but uh, the mobile development applications which you have the Vistok and all, where you just going and developing your environment will come in the platform as a services, but the software as a services which is on demand services like Office 365. Gmail, Microsoft Office, and and your Office 2016 Shoe Trace, or probably uh, uh, probably the other applications which is comes in, uh, which is provided as a software as a service like SQL or the web application, which uh, which Microsoft is providing as a form of software and just it is ready to use. And now we we'll talk about the cloud models. So an on-prem Networking, storage, server, virtualization, OS, application, data, runtime, and middleware. We have to manage each and everything end to end. If anything is goes wrong, the IT person has to run across all the time and then try to find the issues and analyze and, and do the RCA and couple more things has to be do and then. Then only is will you fix that issue and probably might be early if the issue is known. But if you just come into the infrastructure services, which is talking about the cloud model or the Azure model, which is infrastructure services, where you only have to manage the application, data, runtime, middleware, and the OS. Which is if suppose if you deploy a VM, just you need to maintain what are the VM or the applications you have installed in that. What are the data you have put into that? What would be the runtime? If it is the test server, dev server, or it's a, uh, uh, probably you are using for some some production server. So what could be the runtime and and what time you need to be shut down or what time you need to be start? And the middle bear is something is just like a passes and the operating system. If any issues will come into the OS level that. You have to be managed and you will be enough capable. The same work which we are doing in the IT organization, the IT engineer, the system engineer will be doing. The same work we will be doing here, the patching and the uh, middleware updates. And what you don't have to manage is the, basically the hardware layer of, the, uh, of, your, of your infrastructure, the virtualization server and the storage and the network. This is, comes as a hardware layer. This, this, Hardware layer you no need to manage, just you need to manage only the software layer. But in platform as a services, what you need to manage? Hardware plus a uh, few of the OS layer which you have to manage, like middleware. Uh, the Microsoft is going to manage the runtime, middleware, virtualization, other part. What you have to manage if you are going and deploying an application. And suppose you are your your organization told that you need to deploy and build and ban application, build solution probably uh, through Visual Studio. You just write the code and whatever the code you write it that comes in the form of data. So which means the data and the application you have to maintain because uh, the or either we can configure the backup or or there's there's couple more other options there. You can save the data, but Microsoft is not responsible for that. To manage and have to manage the configuration part of the application. That becomes as a software as a services. The software as a services where Microsoft is going to manage for you end to end applications and it just provides you a software where just you go ahead and configure according to your according to your organization standard suppose if you have a office 365 let's say an example. okay let's say an example if you have an office 365 uh, and you need to migrate the v, uh, migrate the emails or probably you need to just integrate your active directory infrastructure so and what are the things has to be go there and, and how you're going to migrate your mailboxes, data uh, or other part, the web application part. So everything, if anything is goes wrong, Microsoft is only responsible because uh, it's been taking care of the full part over here and your data will be secure and safe. That's what the Microsoft is giving you the guarantee. 
the software or the services you are going to buy and basically it is it is cheap and it will reduce the cost much for you let's move to the next slide and now we'll talk about what what are the azure component and uh, what could be the services there are a lot many services i just uh, have a time so just i put it few of them you see in compute databases containers enterprise integration other other clouds like windows azure government this is called as private cloud azure germany that is also for germany based uh, private organization azure stack which is now probably in, in september october is a leading market in the azure stack which is also a private cloud where you just go ahead and if you you know just just uh, set up the azure stacks hardware <coughs> with the different when you're taking the hardware from the different vendors just set up in your environment and you have to configure the end to end which is also comes into the azure stack and it is uh, the tool where you just completely migrate your data from on premises to there but that is only probably might be necessary for the bigger organization but <clears throat> it is it is still in, in in preview and lot more capabilities which is coming with the azure stack and uh, let's say we'll go for the networking part we are just having a couple of services the virtual network load balancer the gateway vpn gateway azure dns the traffic manager which we are which we are uh, going through it during this course uh, and the a plus content services this is these are the services which is which is basically <coughs> used to custom your design and search or you can put the search on that so basically it's a part of the platform services of only uh, we are not uh, just going through it for one by one and the storage storage in the sense uh, the what are the storage uh, criteria the storage account and how the data is going to be stored what is so simple and the backup and the site recovery what are those things how to take the backup and how the site recovery will be working and the data and analysis these are the integration tool which is not a part of this course and uh, i'll just uh, the developers tool the visual studio and azure dev test case which is used uh, the the probably the users they use for the lab purpose and the application inside the good tool to monitor your web applications uh, and apart from that iot iot is, is now heading to the market and now iot is is to the heading heading to the market and uh, basically is required and dot net developer and notification system and stream analysis guy you can just you know integrate their on premises applications to the iot and then it can be easily deployed to the azure and then we just talk about the web plus mobile application the web apps which i talk about mobile apps how you can just go ahead and plan mobile apps what could be the logical and the content delivery network which is use the cache method and then so it will provide the public cache method for you so you can just you know move your data or the videos basically we use the the publisher who has the content like media the video audio uh, or you just say the gana.com uh, these guys are using this type of the storage because they have a, a less of lex turn of the probably the much songs that need to put it and and you know the when we just browse it we just need to be listen it's fast so in in this this in this type of the scenario we use the content delivery network and the search engine which you use for your web application if you just go ahead and search like a major.com or probably nint.com and when you just search for sql course azure course and then it will be just guide you okay these are the ni nint courses will be there okay so how i can go and contact them and work upon them and what could be the scenarios and all will be there so these are the things we can put it into uh, in the search criteria so it will be easy to search even though the location wise or only the other content wise and then we'll come to the security and the identity manager as as i told uh, microsoft has improved a lot of securities 
and we come on security and the security center which has all of your uh, Azure like we can say that Azure advisor plus uh, OMS monitoring your environment you put the security NSC you enable the PIM uh, the uh, basically the primary identity primarily identity access management and change just in time X NSG and the key vault key vault is just uh, a one very good part over here because you can encrypt your disk VM while using the key vault and secure a network and uh, it, it the key vault would be applied and, and most of the almost 80 to 90 percent of the services now so you can do so whenever you, you are you're going and accessing it will ask you the key just you have to enter few of the credentials of few of the things and it will automatically uh, pass through the key and then send the authentication to the VM and you will be able to connect so in such a way you just go ahead and you know uh, save your environment or uh, many others then comes into the Azure Active Directory which is uh, the Active Directory how we are using it in on premises but it is it is just a software based the SaaS applications where you have an active directory and it will be in, in different version p1 p2 and p3 and separate version has several limitation and uh, you can if you wanted to use for trial you can just use the base basic one that is free then come to the azure active directory b2b b2b is business to continue suppose you want to allow other applications to your environment level, like you want uh, X uh, R cloud uh, environment. Uh, I would want to allow R cloud uh, and NINT to the R cloud. Then how it will be? So through this, we just allow those access at that particular email IDs and the domains. Okay, if the request will coming from this, okay, it should be accessible. And then if we come to on Azure Active Directory services, the domain services which we have, which is just a domain name server which used to, uh, you know, that the, the way it's worked in Azure, so we can easily uh, using these services, you will be able to add to the domain and configure your domain services and in multiple levels, which just, we will just go and talk about in, in the depth uh, in the Latest session, the, the next session probably, or or the in the course, and the multi-factor authentication. It means uh, you have a dual authentication or the triple authentication for your services. Uh, like uh, as of now, you are using um, just the anti-credentials, and you just log them. Suppose someone has hacked your uh, environment, and uh, probably they know your credentials and just log them. In those cases. Or probably you just save the your credentials in the browser, but someone has logged in and see your mails and a couple of private data which you don't want to allow. So most of the companies or the organizations they are going for a multi-factor authentication, which means you can configure the multi-factor authentication. So one uh, will be uh, your uh, application base plus your mobile authentication or the email authentication. So the one the code you are putting into the into this is your anti anti login and then it will ask you to provide the code and this for the code and it will be authenticated later. But when you just log into the newer device or some other, it will ask again same things. And the monitoring and the manager part, which I already talked about, application inside log analytics, you will be having a monitoring backup site recovery billing. You can see the billing, the Azure Advisor. This is a good tool and to just suggest what are the things has to be changed and what are the recommendation is just send you the recommendation and the resource health it just shows you what are the resource health of your environment and uh, how it will be working so I just based on my uh, PPD I just just prepare all those things so the compute services which comes with the virtual machine website cloud services Cloud services are part of the classic model, which only it might be uh, using for now, but in future it might be going out. And it, it might be going out, and, and we can say the cloud services uh, here, 
and which you can build and deploy and you can configure the load balancer and the VM you can create create deploy and manage virtual machines running in the uh, <coughs> running in the Windows Azure cloud and create the higher level in the skills service fabric batch container services <coughs> these are these are the uh, basically compute involvement that we come into the Network services we are having a virtual network, traffic manager, load balancer, express route, Azure DNS, CDN, and the VPN gateway. You can you create the virtual network to connect to your VM and the traffic manager to route the traffic, the load balancer to load balance your applications or the VM, the route incoming traffic for high performance and the availability and the Azure DNS where you can just host your on premises DNS and the VPN gateway. The storage services <coughs> uh, is is a storage account really store simple and comes in Azure Backup and Azure Site Recovery. Azure Backup and Site Recovery to take the backup and the Site Recovery. Uh, site Recovery is just provide you uh, the Site Recovery is just provide you the DR concept here and it will be uh, using it in migration to and Apart from that, you just use the store simple and apart from that, you use the store simple and another one, it could be the same. And the security and identity will be security center keyword and Azure Active Directory, Azure Directory B2C services, and Active Directory domain services, <coughs> which will be there. And apart from that, Active Directory domain services is just Used to join to the domain, the policy, the LDAP, and the covers the NTLM and authentication supported, which I just talking about in a uh, previous slide. And the multi factor authentication is a two way step identity verification, which I already informed you. And the monitoring and the management uh, how you can monitor your applications and uh, how you are going to automate your application schedule and Azure willing. <coughs> so monitoring, diagnose, Azure Advisor and Azure Resource Manager, how you are going and deploying the things over here. Okay, so now we talk about the uh, Azure Resource Manager and whatever the questions you have will be taken in the uh, last session. Uh, during the last session and uh, we'll, we'll have <coughs> a couple of questions over there and I, I will try to you know answer or answer them all and they come to the web and uh, mobile services where the logic apps application content will be that work services as your search as I told as your search as capable capabilities capabilities to your custom web and mobile app for using the your search like n INT has created a website and is just put it in his search engine. Okay, when just someone search, okay, in the Chennai, Bangalore, Hyderabad, Delhi, or in Australia, UK, and US, someone has to search. So they will just, if they will search, okay, where is the institute? So they don't have to search in the full content, right? Just to type, okay, in Australia, AUS. That will automatically suggest okay you are searching about Australia and this way just click on that and it will automatically route it to their data center or their centers sorry not data center I am much in and, and system I will sorry so their centers and uh, you will get good information about it and it will be working fine for you guys as well to use the services and basically these are the development services <coughs> and uh, we will using a couple of services uh, the the web, web services on the CTM role, a couple more other services on this course. And let's come into the Visual Studio and the deployment tools. This is called as the Dev Test Lab and the application insight and hockey apps, which is used to develop the couple of applications and API management or or the services for the developers, not for the infrastructure guys. So need a lot more to cover. And the Azure government is a Microsoft government which is just built upon the functional principles of the securities and the private government is a private which 
public cloud don't have access at all none of the organization or anybody has access no one can hack their system because it's a built in their data center uh, into the form of the box the server hardware form and the same way is a new hybrid cloud platform the azure stack which will deliver your services your organization migration to the uh, uh, to the azure and uh, let's say the azure virtual, virtual machine overview now you are, now you are able to listen to me Okay. Uh, now you are able to hear to me, right? Okay. So uh, <laughs> the Azure Virtual Machine Overview uh, will be there, and uh, let's talk about the Azure Virtual Machine. Uh, the we will be talking about the what would be the Azure uh, virtual machine and the several types of uh, demand is cable and the compute resources that Microsoft Azure offers and the Azure VM gives you the flexibility of the virtualization uh, without having or buying or maintaining any 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 hardware or the software or, or any don't have to run the hyperview or we'll get into that the development and the test you can use it configure your application for development test what would be the best scenario application in the cloud <clears throat> because you demand uh, for your applications can fluctuate and you you need to be install your applications into the cloud you can do that extend your data center use the hybrid migration and you can extend your data center to the cloud of uh, or the vm the vm or hyper v you are using in the form of uh, in the form of VMs and the different way what or what would be the different possible criteria you just create the VM using the Azure portal you just create the VM and apart from that you can just have a specialized specialized VM where you just go ahead and run the subscribe command and a couple of other command and took the and, and uploaded to the storage account or take the VS, VSD file from the container and specialized and then you can just go ahead and then do that image the template probably will having the ERM template or, or other template the automation uh, things where you just go ahead and, and write some code and, and deploy the things and the Azure PowerShell is a very good tool where you just you know go ahead and just write few of the commands and just you know, create the VM based on a requirement and it is demanding on uh, other part two the customer is also demanding now he comes into the visual studio even though uh, he just came to know in the first time probably you can also deploy the a couple of people will come to know first time only because uh, the visual studio also can deploy and manage <coughs> the vm and you can use the visual Visual Studio and the Azure SDK uh, tool for that. Okay, now I just <coughs> just make it. Uh, now now I just just make it few of the things over here, uh, and, and probably now you will be able to hear me too. And Azure Virtual Machine prerequisite and add feature, which is Azure subscription. You need in basically you need an Azure subscription and the virtual machine username and the password, the resource group, where your all the resources are going to be add and the location, which location your customer is located, either in India, East US, West US, Japan, China, Central US. Uh, Beijing, Shanghai, whatever the region uh, it will be available, you just select those. 
the which type of the disk you need to use the premium disk or the SDT disk which is a long topic we'll just cover up in the course and the VM size is VM size based on the VM size you will be charged so make sure whenever you're selecting the disk or the VM it should be a cost effective and it should be performing well and the storage account which you will be creating where you all the virtual machine or the website the file will be storing the subnet uh, is a range of the IP address which is just uh, adding in your virtual network so your VM can take uh, the IP address from uh, your subnet and we can say the VPN connectivity which is called as a subnet or the public IP or the NSC network security group which which is probably you might be needed and if you're using in the test environment probably it might not be needed but yes if you're doing and configuring your on-premises environment or working with the customer it is necessary to have subnet public IP and the NSG should be there <coughs> to connect to your network to secure the network to provide the gateway to connect to your network it is very much required and the public IP basically used to communicate your uh, Azure infrastructure to uh, on-premises or the publicly outside the virtual network and let's move to the next slide Azure virtual machine settings and the features you can uh, have up to you can just manage your disk and unmanage your disk you can save your money when you just say bring your license own and then you can add the VM extension you can add the high availability which is Microsoft is providing 99.9 99, 99.95% of Azure SLA. You can enable the monitoring and as you can just enable the guest OS diagnose uh, to just collect the log, the storage disk. You can manage the disk based on your requirement. If you just select the manage the disk, it means the Microsoft is managing the disk on behalf of you. So when your disks are getting filled, it will be automatically added or it's if your VM is getting crashed then it will be automatically backed up and the diagnostic storage account which is used to just diagnose your storage account and analyze uh, that okay what could be the possibility or what could be the error you are getting here and how how we can just fix that issue and the virtual machine troubleshooting what what are the way you just go ahead and uh, you know uh, troubleshoot the VMs. You can do it like generally the people say, "Hey, I just forgot my password. I don't remember what is my password here. And how do you do?" So there is an option. I'll just switch to your demo. Uh, just go ahead and, and check your password over there and change the network or the VM setting configuration and the network security group cloud services endpoint and you can review the VM boot diagnostics check the holes uh, check the resource health reset your VM password restart VM and you can re even redeploy the VM redeploy the VM doesn't change anything it just uh, redeploy it and all the data will be same so don't get confused in redeployment part As people will ask probably ask when you just suggest this they will ask that what could be about my data that means your data will be saved just only the physical and the network layer are going to be changed not network layer only the OS level things and probably just just uh, removing <coughs> just just removing the, the things uh, from there and it will be fine okay so let's just start the demo here I have this uh, subscription with me and let's say I need to create the VM I just click here and uh, click on compute I just select the server 2012 data center I will always prefer select and say cloud web and my name here 
and the password and the username always with uh, minimum 12 character and maximum probably more than 54 characters are there just always put the password and the username according to your organization or your information network, network and just create the new the resource group where all the resources are going to be stored I'll just say uh, cloud 234 and the location where you want it to be stored what I'm talking about South India, East Asia I'll just select South India South India it means the Microsoft Azure Data Center has in Azure as well and save your money this the things I talked about being your own license and if you say yes then the VM and the server won't be activated you have to activate it while providing the key with the software assurance things and here if you just go ahead and click here and view all and select the VM size which is required for your applications or your networking if you are doing in testing purpose I would always suggest to just you know go ahead and uh, just create the lower instances which would be much short but would be very less charges and just shut down the VM so you can save the cost if you are not using it all I would say I'll just, just select the and now you can say it, it's been automatically if you don't have any any virtual network it will be automatically selected the virtual network and it will be uh, if you have the VM I'll just say I need to select this VM it is already created I'm just going with the default and creating the new one as a test session and then you can say the network security group and the extension <coughs> the network security group you want to allow and you can change it later also we are allowing the port number 3389 here and uh, this is a high availability set here and you can say the monitoring you need to enable the monitoring for this later also you can do that the diagnostic storage account would be this uh, just purchase and it will be charged just click on purchase and it will be charged 0 0.1770 dollar uh, per hour as I say you can pay per hour and per month so I'm not going to create for now I have already created uh, for my demo purpose Suppose I have I have this VM I just, just created and you can see the overview here you see the resource group the server name and the public IP address and which VNet it is the location which I deployed and the Microsoft Azure responsorship and you can see the activity log it will show you the disk <coughs> probably the logs what would be the logs over here and you can see that a couple of logs which is coming and it will show based on your VM it is working or not and the IAM access you can restrict the access using IAM role for someone you, you don't want to give the access to this VM and let's move out to the diagnostic solutions just show you what are the diagnostic solutions you have and the tag you have over here just you can tag it the automation resource manager and the value provided you just uh, so the availability set you cannot add the VM which is already created so when you are creating the VM if you are going for the availability set then only it will work and now you can see the disk size and suppose you have then this OS disk and you manage or someone asked to add the new disk you just click over here and add the new disk and you can see the extension <coughs> here and just add the extension here and um, 
and these are the extensions would be there that that we come into the network configuration part what are the VMs we have and go to the network properties the VM size if I just wanted to change my VM size here I'll just you know go ahead and, and I'll just go ahead and change my I just go ahead and, and and change my VM size here I can select anything which is supportable and even though I can just schedule the backup for my particular VM just going and creating the things our cloud I'll just select the void default I'll just enable the backup and it will be just stored into this particular resource manager or the key vault which is which we are using for uh, backup purpose and in, in the property you just see the resource manager code or the resource manager and everything would be there and uh, log you can even though you can just uh, add those logs so no one can delete your resources <coughs> let's talk about the troubleshooting part which I just say suppose you have an activity for your VM or the servers or that yes you need in this time the VM should be shut down or in this time you just need the VM should be up you can just enable this option schedule the time and the web hook URL if you want it or you need an alert you just enable the notification before auto shutdown so if anything is running in your on premise network or anything you just you know just, just finish your work and do the things Matrix basically just shows you the diagnostic matrix and you can add the matrix alert based on your read, write, and logical disk and apart from that couple more processor or networking. What is running on a VM and based on that you just you know, select and uh, <coughs> the, the things would be will be reflecting over here. Uh, the <coughs> so it will it will just just guide you. And the alert rule, if you have any, any alert rule, anything you wanted to monitor the particular activity, just create the alert log activity over here. The diagnostic settings, which is uh, perform CPU, memory, disk, network, and, and other than the other part as well. So you can do those things in a couple of ways. Like as of now, you're having this part, and we can say the log part information and other things you needed IS log failed request you can even check that also if you are running the IS directory into this what are the cache dumps you have the things the agent the windows agent uh, <coughs> the windows agent should be there and other things would be so the diagram you can see the complete diagram of VM where it is getting connected, where is the storage account and all. Let's say the advisor recommendation which I'm just talking about uh, on this part. We can say the, the the recommendation which I have is for high availability. It is saying okay, you don't configure the backup, you don't have any configuration backup. If that VM or probably the someone has done the batching and all. That means your if your VM is get crashed or due to any emergency or any situation, if your VM is get crashed, it means your VM are not going to be backed up and probably you might lose the data. So we just just uh, give you in this thing and apart from that, it is showing uh, that you will be having <coughs> Azure Virtual Machine is not configured. Just so give me a minute. Um, I'm sorry for this. I uh, just need to rush for office. So the resource health uh, would be the resource health would be here. You can just find out. Okay, it is available. The boot diagnostic and the important part will come as a password. 
and someone say yeah i forgot my password so there is the user name and the password someone says my vm is not connecting over here this you know just reset configuration click here and then reset the configuration and you can just go ahead and redeploy the vm and it is showing okay the new vm if you just go ahead it just remove the physical layer none of the other things and i'll just um, go ahead and then conclude the session here and uh, these are the this is the a uh, few of the azure documentation links and the vm links which i uh, generally follow are the how you can create the vm azure subscription even though you can follow my blog or cloudbab.wordpress.com uh, so you just get in details so just uh, follow those instruction on azure documentation uh, as a part of and it will be helpful so let's see if i'm able to take any questions now or we can just wind up the session Uh, Lalit, this is Shiva. So, uh, what are the yeah, what are the advantages of uh, Azure over AWS? Basically, there there is a very thin layer on uh, if you just talk about AWS and Azure because <clears throat> when you just talk about Azure and AWS, it is uh, just kind of uh, all the services are same, but there could be a pricing could be difference and. Uh, the features or the software because AWS is there in the market for a couple of years the, the people in the US or, or the other market they having a trust on this but the Microsoft is just this releases now and they are working very fast on this part so you can just just wanted to check okay what could be you can just just segregate into the compatibility areas if you are if you are just migrating the environment to the Azure or the cloud or or the AWS, Azure or the AWS, are your applications are compatible? Because I see that 90% organization or 90% organization are using Windows uh, Windows platform. So if they wanted to go there, yes, they will use the Microsoft platform only. So the people would prefer to go there. They would go here in Microsoft because it, uh, even though it's cheaper and best services and, uh, and there are a couple more. Uh, more benefit to be here. So this is basically uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Very very clear. Hello, Lalit sir. Yes. Hello, Lalit. Hi, this is Vikas. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Um, so when we start to learn about Azure, we see a lot of information uh, that we need to look into, like Azure, Azure VMs, Azure Backup, uh, Azure Stack, Azure Functions, uh, so many things. Like where do we start from? And which which is the most basic component that we, we should be starting and learn about Azure? Basically, we will be starting from all the components types. So once the component, you will be understand what are the components used for what and have a good understanding and then we just slowly move down the services creation and then later part we just go for the migration once you have the all the basic requirements has been completed uh, so we just go over the component because I see the couple of the people they having a confusion or they having a because of the similarity in name they having confusion the terms of services so we start from the what are the services we need to require and what need to be done okay uh, Lalit sir hi Ganesh uh, Kanade from uh, LDS Infotech over here okay so I just want to uh, know that suppose uh, I have created one VM over in my you know Azure subscription under my Azure subscription and one uh, I guess China IP is hitting uh, to my web server so, I mean, how to add or how to block list, uh, blacklist that IP, specific IP? No troubleshooting questions for now. You can do it from your NSG. I'll just answer your questions. Okay. 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 Block it from the firewall. But please don't ask any troubleshooting questions because. Okay. Got it. Sorry. Let's go for some. That's okay. That's not a problem. I answer you. 
you can block it from the NSG. Just look at out the code and block that IP address. Okay. 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 Thank you. Uh, yes. So uh, I'm I'm really sorry that I'm binding up the session over here, and I hope you all to meet in the next session. And uh, if you have any feedback, any any feedback, just share it with Jaya and IIT, and uh, hope for the next that we have the same audience in the next session too. Thank you so much, and I'm really sorry yes. for just too fast because I just have to rush for some other stuff. Thank you. And, but once we just start the session, we will um, go slowly and then open all the prospect area. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a nice day and have a good night.